last years of the AI boom, we have realized that no, no company has any moat. This, this phrase was actually told by a Google employee, but uh, we've just realized that it is actually true and it applies to any company. But why? So, we have realized that uh, bigger models aren't always necessarily the better. And scaling over better data could give mode to a company. And that's why most of the time the companies that release uh, models do not really release any data these days because that's where the competitive advantage is coming from. So cutting edge tools, the synthetic data that is generated by these models um, open source large models enable community to come up with uh, better models over time that are smaller and more efficient. So open source will almost always catch up. And models and APIs easily get outdated or outperformed. And at this point, we just cannot catch up with what is better than uh, the, the another. And this actually applies to any domain. It doesn't necessarily only apply for text generation, but it also applies to other domains, which I'm going to talk about. So uh, let me back up my claims first, because they are a bit sensational, I know. Um, when I say bigger models aren't necessarily better, so this graph is taken from the essay of uh, Sarah Hooker about the, how the computational thresholds do not necessarily pose any risk and we shouldn't be regulating the model sizes per number of parameters. And in here you see some green dots and you see gray dots. So these green dots um, show the model sizes that are small and the gray dots, the model, models above 13 billion parameters. And uh, this graph implies uh, that uh, the, the models outperform, the small models over time outperform larger models on open LLM leaderboard, which is a leaderboard uh, where there is basic uh, text um, text generation evaluation benchmarks, and these dots are the average of those benchmarks, which are oftentimes about, you know, a model's ability to solve certain tasks, including some niche tasks as well. And uh, the data quality, data representation, uh, and optimization techniques uh, are better than scaling over compute. While uh, Richard Sutton's uh, bitter lesson holds, you can get uh, some easy gains through just scaling your model and spending more on compute. Uh, we see that uh, this trend declines. We, nobody is just going for bigger compute because uh, the model's life cycle, throughout the model's life cycle, um, you have 80% of the costs are coming from inference. And because of this, this is no longer sustainable. We have to come up with smaller models that are more capable than the bigger models so that we can cut on the inference costs uh, on a larger scale. And to do so, uh, people have come up with better quality data, which holds the competitive advantage here. And, uh, uh, better representations for this data and better optimization um, targets, such as you know the recent alignment techniques like preference optimization to align these large language models. And open source will always catch up. So uh, in here you also see uh, a graph made by Maxim Labon, and this shows uh, on the top. Top right, you can see the best models, and uh, you see on with the green dots, these are the open source models, and the red dots are proprietary APIs, and per performance on MMLU, which is a famous text generation benchmark, the open source models are catching up with the closed source models that, are that used to perform better. But uh, how does open source catch up? So the tools are currently out there, you know, like uh, the 
optimization techniques that I have previously mentioned, the preference optimization and everything, there's a library for that. There is a library for parameter efficient fine tuning techniques, such as you know the adapters and stuff. They are still out there, and they make uh, the improvements more accessible for people. Um, distillation quantization techniques. There is a library for that, and uh, there is an existing set of large models used for data generation. So distillation techniques have become way more popular. And there are so many community initiatives to label um, uh, quality data for any task. And uh, for instance, to give an example for the data labeling, uh, data labeling efforts, uh, this is a Data is Better Together initiative, uh, where 10, uh, more than 10,000 examples have been labeled, and there is more than 300 contributors, and this was hosted, this was hosted thanks to Argila and Hugging Face. And another one is hosted by Co here, uh, and the number of contributors is, sorry, number of contributions is huge. It's uh, 22K uh, examples for also the low resource languages. And uh, there is 150 contributors for this initiative. And uh, there is so many uh, models for, uh, for data generation, aka pseudo-labeling. And uh, you can find a bunch of data sets that are generated uh, through this technique on Hugging Face. And uh, this is, for instance, ultra chat model uh, that is uh, I think ChatGPT was used to label this data set, which is la later used to uh, fine-tune more models. A good example of this is uh, Zephyr 7B. So Zephyr 7B model uh, was developed by Hugging Face. It is essentially the Mistral 7B base model, firstly fine-tuned on, um, fine-tuned on the, um, sorry, fine-tuned on the ultra chat data set with uh, distilled supervised fine-tuning. The reason why it's called distilled is because the data set itself was generated through a teacher model. And uh, le the model was later um, applied distilled DPO, which is, again, um, there was another model used uh, to label the data set. Um, it's called Ultra Feedback. I think this was generated by ChatGPT again. And uh, the direct preference optimization technique was used uh, with this data set to further align uh, Zephyr, Zephyr model to be more helpful and more aligned. So this is a great example of how open source can advance the, the development of the large models. Uh, and this model was back in the day was great uh, in the many of the benchmarks despite its size of 7B. And what is even better is that the community didn't stop there. Uh, they have taken this model and further fine-tuned it, uh, merged it, uh, quantized it, and also um, uh, applied, did parameter efficient fine tuning. Uh, if you go to the model repository of Zephyr 7b, uh, you will see there is a model tree over there. This is a recent feature at Hugging Face, um, which has the uh, downstream models. So it's a great initiative by Hugging Face. And Zephyr is just an example. There is 140K models uh, tech for text generation on Hugging Face Hub as of now. And there is more than 1 million models for other tasks as well. It's not only text generation. You can just go and find recently popular vision language models, for instance, zero-shot models, non-zero-shot models, and so on. So I wanted to give a bunch of uh, other examples uh, about <laughs> my claim about uh, this applies to any domain. Uh, first one is segment editing model. So segment editing model is a foundation segmentation model released by Meta. And uh, Meta has recently come up with the 
a second version of segment editing model that can do uh, tracking over video, so it has a separate memory module uh, to keep track of the mask over time. And um, for the first version of segment editing model, uh, the researchers have taken this model. So basically, this model has a very large image encoder. And uh, to make it run on edge, the, the people have come up with ways to dis distill this model. So some of them distilled the image encoder part. Some of them distilled the whole network. Um, and there is a bunch of variants uh, of this model uh, as of now, there is mobile SAM, fast SAM, edge SAM, slim SAM. As of now, I think slim SAM was the state of the art. And I think this is a great initiative, because now this can actually run on edge devices, thanks to the researchers. So if you just open source your model, uh, you, will, you will do a great work, uh, because people take your model and just improve it over time, make it more efficient while trying to keep the performance of this model. And another model is Whisper. Uh, so Whisper is, was a model released by OpenAI back in the day. And uh, we have, at Hugging Face, we have hosted a, a contribution sprint where people would take Whisper and fine tune it. And so many models were fine tuned. And also, uh, there was another initiative from the Hugging Face researchers called Distill Whisper, which is about distilling Whisper uh, to a smaller architecture and uh, making it more efficient. And then later, OpenAI was quite inspired by this, and they came up with uh, Whisper V3 Turbo. And uh, this model, they have said that it was inspired by Distill Whisper. So just uh, out open sourcing Whisper for OpenAI was quite uh, beneficial. And lastly, um, the last example is Stable Diffusion was released. Everybody knows Stable Diffusion by now. Um, back in the day, 1.5 was the uh, state of the art at some point. And then there, is, there has been so many techniques um, that was uh, developed to improve uh, and customize this model, including control nets, which is a uh, way to condition the model with, the, uh, with an image mask. And there is uh, Dream Boot as well to personalize this model. And uh, we, we have also hosted a community sprint that was sponsored by Google. Google has given Hugging Face a bunch of TPUs uh, to fine tune this model uh, on a bunch of control net conditions, and it went viral later on. If you remember, there was at some point this uh, viral QR code generator that was, you know, like aesthetically generating QR codes. So it is essentially um, canny, canny control mask with the stable diffusion. And uh, that model was actually generated. Um, uh, that model was actually trained using one of the models uh, in this sprint, like the people who has released it was in our sprint, for instance. So why should you migrate to open source? A good question. Um, you can just um, guarantee utmost privacy. You can deploy the model to browser uh, to guarantee the privacy of your end user. You can also deploy the model to edge devices, and uh, you will have utmost control, control over your models. So the API that you're using, the model in the back end can change by time, which will have, make you develop your prompt or whatever all over again. But if you have an open source model, you have the utmost control over it. Nothing changes because it is yours. Um, and uh, you can also customize this model um, by you knowing what is going in the background. You can just fine tune this model. If you have a shorter budget, you can just quantize this model or distill this model, and the libraries and the tools are out there. So the barrier of entry to open source at this point is very low. So I wanted to go through, lastly, some of the libraries that enable you to do this. 
So if you would like to deploy your model efficiently, there is a bunch of libraries. There is VLLM. Uh, there is Llama CPP. There is text generation inference. These are for um, generation uh, text generation LLMs. And there is text embedding inference, which is for embedding models. So as of now, by the way, text generation inference is also supporting vision language models. So the difference between you serving it and using one of these tools, which are open source actually, these don't have any commercial license, is that these already support many um, state-of-the-art techniques. Um, they also have some quantization support. For instance, there is some um, quantization techniques such as GPTQ, AWQ. These are supported by text generation inference. Um, they also support tensor parallel inference, for instance, uh, which is when you cannot just fit your model into one device. Um, yeah, and uh, also token streaming is hard to implement, and this is under the hood implemented for you by, for, by text generation inference. And you can just get started uh, with one line of code, but if you further need any other um, customization, you can just do that. But uh, this is very easy to just to serve. Uh, it gives you the option to serve it in your own way without the Docker as well. Um, so Hugging Chat is one of uh, Hugging Face's um, interfaces for chat. Uh, chat LLMs, and uh, it also currently supports the vision language models as well. Um, this is powered by chat text generation inference, and we have a product called, not product, but uh, again, open source tool called the uh, Chat UI, which is the interface for this, for this tool. So you can actually serve your own uh, hugging chat at home. Uh, the good thing about this is that the recent state-of-the-art models, all of them, are oftentimes supported by this tool. And if you further need any customization, you can use transformers. Um, I don't know how many of you are using transformers, but essentially this is a library that supports the state-of-the-art uh, models, providing abstractions to load and fine-tune these models so you don't have to go low level when you just want to fine-tune it. It has also some abstractions for further easy fine-tuning, such as trainer. And also, uh, it supports many different stuff like quantization techniques and so on. So I wanted to show you the API a bit, in case you do not know. This is simple text generation. Um, so there, are, there is auto models in transformers, and these classes are sort of these very simple abstractions. Uh, auto model with, for causal LM means load the model for me and put uh, a text generation head on top of it, or for classification, it's also load the model and then put a tech, uh, text classification model on top of it. So we have these auto model classes for different tasks. It, you can find it for anything, including um, object detection, uh, automatic speech recognition, and so on. And uh, each model class has its own processor class as well, uh, called auto processor or auto tokenizer or auto image processor. Um, you have to pre-process the data, but you do not have to deal with it uh, thanks to these classes. So to load these models, just uh, pass the model ID from Hugging Face Hub to the auto model, auto model for causal LM from pre-trained method. And uh, you can just specify some stuff. If you want to put it on a certain GPU, you can do that. If you want to load it in an optimized way, you can do that. If you want to use it in a lower precision, you can also do that. Like, there is a lot of options. And initialize the tokenizer from the same model as well, because each model has a different tokenizer. And uh, you just... There is, a, there is an API called chat template because um, these language models often have special tokens, and these tokens are um, hard to sort of 
pass to the text, you have to modify them all the time, and I find it very brittle. But instead of it, we have developed chat templates, and these templates help you just format the text in a more human-readable way. So you pass the prompt, and uh, you pass the messages, like the multiple conversation turns, and apply the chat template, and just pass uh, the model inputs to the tokenizer. And finally, uh, you can call models generate method to do the generation. And after the generation, you can use the tokenizer to decode the, the output to the human readable format, aka plain text. And parameter efficient fine tuning is uh, a library that allows you to apply parameter efficient fine tuning. But uh, there is a bunch of techniques. The most popular one is low rank adaptation, LoRa. Um, but there are so many variants of LoRa these days, like Dora, Mora, Adalora, whatever. These are just uh, supported with parameter efficient fine tuning. And because parameter efficient fine tuning and all of the libraries that I'm going to mention from now are essentially sort of wrapping or directly supporting transformers, um, you can just combine them like Lego blocks, and I find it very easy to use. And uh, you can also do model merging, and it also supports bits and bytes, which I'm going to show later, but this is. Uh, a quantization library which allows you to load the model in 4.8 bit and then put, a param put an adapter on top and just fine tune the model. And uh, the API is again very simple. You, ha you initialize the model li just like transformers and then you initialize the LoRa config to specify um, your LoRa hyperparameters and then call get peft model, and you can see here very low number of uh, parameters are trained instead of um, a, the whole model because it just doesn't make any sense anymore to lo uh, to just uh, fine tune the whole model, but just uh, fine tune specific number of parameters. Another library is called Transformers Reinforcement Learning, which contains the alignment techniques that I have previously mentioned, such as preference optimization techniques. And again, it has very nice abstractions. And you can find uh, this also supports uh, the PEF. Uh, and this is essentially another wrapper around Transformers. So, this in this ecosystem, you can just combine things. Um, for instance, uh, let me briefly show uh, the API very quickly. So you have you import from TRL, SFT config, and SFT trainer. You load the data set and then initialize the SFT config. SFT in here means supervised fine tuning. It's just normal fine-tuning, which is supported by this library. It could have been any other model um, technique. And then initialize the trainer with the model that you want to fine-tune, and the config and the data set and called train. Lastly, there is optimization libraries. There is Quanto, uh, which is which is uh, two, four, eight bit uh, uh, quantization library that supports multiple backends. There is bits and bytes, which is the most popular for 4-8-bit quantization. And there is optimum, which has multiple graph optimizations and quantization techniques inside. And um, bits and, for the bits and bytes, this is very cool because um, it works very in a very compatible manner with transformers, you have uh, you just uh, normally how you initialize a model with transformers. You just pass the bits and bytes config as you see in here, and it initializes your model in eight bit or four bit. And uh, let's build together. So you can just get started at huggingface.co. You can check the documentations that I have linked here, and yeah, let's build together. Thank you.